flow with the show. Hello. Hope you're doing all right. This Hi. is. F- Hi. <laughs> I'm still getting the groove with the intros. So, hey. <laughs> I'm just so excited to be here. I am so excited you're here. Welcome to my new podcast, Flow with the Show. This is episode number three, and I've got a very special guest with me. I have got Jansu. Jansu. Hello. Hi. Hey. Hey. Jansu, I'm going to do like a little short bio of you, and you fill in the gaps and let me know if... If I'm wrong in any way or if I've yeah. missed something here. All good. So Jansu is someone that I've known for almost 15 years now, which is crazy to think about. Oh my God. <laughs> That's Let people wild. Like, cal- calculate our ages. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, met, uh, we met in a business program in university in Toronto, Canada. And since then, Jansu is now a lawyer in the entertainment industry in sunny Los Angeles, California. Sorry, I don't know if my my show my showtime voice comes on. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Jansu is also a very talented musician. So uh, Ooh, nice thanks. shot of that. Those guitars in the back, love it. Yes, they're real. <laughs> this is not a virtual it's background. <laughs> You could actually Uh, probably sell it as a stock photo for, like, an accomplished person's background. Uh, With the (laughs) diploma, too. Yeah. (laughs) I love it. Thank you so much for being here, for joining me on the podcast. I'm so excited to catch up with you. I know we don't talk all that often, but I'm so glad we've kept in touch uh, all over these years. And you've had a huge impact on me back from uh, ever since we went to school together. So, Thanks for being here, Jansu. Jansu. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. I mean, I feel like you and I are at a point in our friendship where it's like if we don't talk for like a year and then we talk, it's just like, hey, man, like nothing exactly. has ever happened in between. <laughs> exactly. I mm-hmm. love uh, I love that uh, there are yeah. certain uh, friendships that are like that. And uh, I just I will have a disclaimer for the folks here that are looking at the podcast title spelled spelling your name with a C. And I'm saying Jansu. I'm sure you get this all the time. I am pronouncing it correctly. The C sounds like a J. (laughs) Yes, correct. (laughs) Um, So Jansu, were you born in Turkey? I was born in Turkey. Were you born there or were you born... Or were, you weren't born in Canada, right? You lived there for quite a while, eh? Yeah. We moved when I was in sixth grade to Canada. So you must remember Turkey pretty well. Oh, yeah. I mean, I remember everything. Uh, (laughs) So, I mean, I pretty much grew up there. I'm fluent in Turkish and uh, it... You know, it's my whole childhood was spent there. And when even when we moved to Canada, we tried to visit, you know, very often a year or every other year or so. So, yeah, we go back last time. time. Oh, when was the last time you were back there? Well, it's been three years now because we were supposed to go last year and then the panina bread happened. And (laughs) this is where we are. (laughs) Yeah. This is where we are, and uh, I am so grateful to be mm-hmm. here. I'm so glad you're okay. I'm so glad your family is okay. Yeah, um, me too. Your family's still in uh, in Canada, is that right? And you're in LA? Correct. Yes, yes. They're in Windsor, Ontario. And uh, I mean, I have so many, I have so many questions for you. I let's let me try to try to be concise, and maybe we'll go in like a a chronological order. Or maybe not, actually. What, what I'd like to know, Jansu. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> so I think you currently have a very fascinating uh, work role. Um, you told me that you work at an agency where you guys do deals for podcasts and brands and influencers and live streams and that sort of thing. And uh, I really don't know much about the legal space. I probably should. Um, and I also feel like... I mean, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it's it's kind of like a newish, it's a newish space, I'm guessing, in like rules and regulations for like, I guess there wasn't really like an influencer per se, like, you know, 20 years ago even. So um, I am so curious about what exactly do you do? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I work at a media company and our, my, my client as an attorney working for the media company is a company. But we also service a lot of brands and agencies, 
and we service a lot of the talent and their YouTube channels and their podcasts. So what that means is that we're the we're the middle party between those two players mainly. And the um, the way that YouTubers make money are through sponsorships, brand deals. They also make money through Google AdSense, it's called, uh, where, you know, those pre-roll ads and whatnot. And what we also do is that we have a network on uh, the YouTube platform. So that means that we can link a person's channel to our network and we can also sell those uh, ads that are within that uh, within the videos on the channel. So that is one way that we service talent. What we also do is that we take all of the videos that people make and put them wherever we can. I don't know if you guys have Roku in Canada, Mm -hmm. but on Roku, there's like a million apps uh, that you can watch videos from and random channels in these apps that, you know, there'll be like a kid's content and it's not necessarily like... uh, Disney Channel or Nickelodeon Channel, but it's like kids content. So right. it, we we distribute those videos that exist on YouTube on any platform that will take it really. Okay. And for podcasters, I've seen ads for that. I had no idea. <laughs> I was yeah, like, what exactly, exactly. is <laughs> there? Uh, <laughs> and I mean, and for the podcast, same thing. We have a podcast network. We. Um, get talent to sign into their to our network we distribute their podcast to all the platforms that we can and uh, we sell ads whether that's the podcast person you know speaking about a product uh, in their podcast or a literal inserted ad within the like a as if it's like a tv commercial within the podcast mm-hmm. so yeah we do all of that so I'm guessing like uh, a youtuber or a podcast has to be like pretty big to to get to that like what would you say is the the sort of the minimum threshold of of a youtuber getting to the point where they have both like legal representation and help with that kind of like say selling of ads and and distribution yeah so as far as the size of a channel or a podcast it really there is no minimum uh so what we've done is even we've even invested in creative talent that we think are going to be the next best thing and help them create a podcast from scratch about a topic that we think is going to be a hit. So it doesn't necessarily, there's no minimum. Um, and it's more about also things like engagement of a talent. Let's say someone is an influencer only on TikTok and mm-hmm. that's the only place they're at, then we can start, help them start a YouTube channel if that's what they want to do next and give yeah. them strategies on how to improve it, how to make a brand safe, et cetera. So it, there is no minimum, uh, but I mean, it is pretty required that it's, it can't be just like <laughs> a random person off the street. <laughs> it's yeah. more, we would prefer uh, either podcasts or YouTube channels to come into our network where they have some sort of following elsewhere if they have no following. Mm-hmm. So that's uh, the long way of me saying, I can't tell you what the minimums are, but yeah. <laughs> But there are some. <laughs> I think and I do think it's kind of cool that you are uh, also, I guess, investing in in the the people and the the creator before they get big per se. I feel like I've heard mm-hmm. a lot of that on like Dragon's Den and Shark Tank, where they're like, "I'm investing in you as an entrepreneur." It's like cool. Yeah. Um. Just just one second here. I'm just gonna quench my. <coughs> No oh, problem. Uh, Flo, also Flo Anastasia merch to help me get merch. to the creator level. Oh, thanks. You're merch. wearing the shirt too. <laughs> <laughs> love my shirt. It's really cool. Oh, I love the design. So. Thank I love you. It. It's great. I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, you've been a huge, uh, a huge supporter of mine over the years and <clears throat> It's it's been especially cool because you're not you know as heavy into the the drum and bass genre as maybe other people in my in my network in that but you've always had really encouraging and like insightful tidbits for me to think about as I've sort of evolved as an artist over the years and I do want to share with our with our nice viewers here uh, a little bit of our background together because I think it's it's kind of neat I think I think you know this you're you're the very first person that I've ever improvised with musically so before 
Yeah, oh, man. I did not notice. <laughs> so I we we're just having a good time. I was like, oh, well, we like were. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, that's that was exactly it. It's like the uh, so we we met in business school. Up until that point, um, I had been just like uh, playing classical piano. I had a you know a private teacher. I would do the you know, the conservatory exams and that sort of thing. So I played for about I think it was about twelve years. And you, and you also had an a similar... amazing pianist. Like oh, thanks, man. So like I know I'm sure as your vocals are also great, obviously, <laughs> but. Thanks. You playing <laughs> classical music after we've improvised? I was like, "Wait a minute! This is this is another Much better. league." <laughs> <laughs> but it was—I mean, I'm just saying, you're a great pianist too. I appreciate that. I am. I am trying to uh, crack into it a little bit, back into it a little bit more, and come up with some some piano stuff and possibly some piano samples and keyboard samples uh down the road so stay stay tuned for that but um so right so before we had jammed you had also had a similar I guess trajectory where you were playing classical guitar for many years and then we met in university and it was one of those things of like oh you play music I play music let's play music together <laughs> in business school <laughs> yeah yeah you're so like the out outsiders um yeah. And, uh, and yeah, so I remember like we were, we'd gotten together a bunch of times and that was literally the first time that I was, I guess, didn't have like sheet music in front of me of like, this is what you play. Like I, I guess I'd tried here and there to like come up with my own songs, but I was always kind of like, it never felt like it was working. And then playing with you, you know, you were on the guitars on the piano and we were just like messing around and you were literally improvising. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> Great rapper, guys. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> These are all my original dreams. Um, <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Um, but, yeah, fun. I mean, I, I thank you for that because it was literally the first time that I felt, um, I guess, maybe, I don't know if I want to say safe space, but I guess it did feel like that where it was just like an exploratory time and just learning what it means to improvise and jam with someone. And I think that that's what I really needed, I guess, was to not just sit there and try to make a song on my own, not knowing what I was doing. But I guess it helped to have another person there where you could literally just bounce ideas off each other, felt like, I guess, like a musical conversation. And I remember that sparked so much of the rest of my path, basically, because then all throughout university, I was, you know, meeting other people and jamming and having big jam circles and, and basically for, for lack of a better term, like finding myself as an artist. And so those are really like the formative, formative years of starting to create my own music and art after years of basically learning other people's music. So, so thanks for that, man. <laughs> yeah, it was a good time. I mean, it really was something that I look back on. Um, I mean, I don't, I, I'm not speaking for you, but business school was rough <laughs> for me. I mean, so it was like the best way of me decompressing, just hanging out, having fun, because, um, I mean, music does that to people in general. So it was a great outlet. What, uh, what made you want to go to business school in the first place? How'd you make that decision? Uh, so in high school, I was a pretty good student overall, but... And my, both of my parents are engineers, and it was a pretty set goal of me, you know, be following in their footsteps of becoming an engineer. And then I took my first physics class, and I cried during the first quiz. Oh, no. <laughs> I was like, this ain't for me. I don't know what to do. So then, um, you know, we're a first-generation immigrant. I wanted to make my parents proud. They had a lot of expectations on me, as they should, to, you know— encourage their daughter to be successful in life, which is great. But, and in North America, it seemed like it was either, um, you know, you become a doctor, engineer, mm. lawyer, like the, mm. the, the check the marks. Three. Of, <laughs> yeah, the big three. And at the time I wasn't really thinking about law or, I mean, I couldn't do physics, so I couldn't go into uh, being a doctor. And I also did not take biology because I didn't want to. <laughs> so I was also looking at other career paths where like there was a, like as weird as it sounds, a ranking system of some sort. Hmm. So 
I found our business school through just like searching best universities in Canada. And nice. one of the lists was best business schools in Canada. And yeah. I was like, okay, well, maybe I'll do that. I mean, I have good grades <laughs> and it doesn't really require me knowing science and I'm pretty good Fair. at math. I could probably do this. And um, and I mean, it was it was fine, but I, I didn't love it. Uh, and I did not see it as something I could do with my career. And um, I mean, I was on probation. Oh. <laughs> so did I ever tell you that? Yeah, I, I was don't. like... Thanks. So. I had to go in front of like a board and I had a hearing. Yeah, it was like oh, real. Oh, it's school probation. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> I don't. Know. I don't remember <laughs> the time that you were in prison. I don't. No, no, not in prison. No, no, school probation. And um, so the saving grace was that I found electives that made me happy, which was a flamenco guitar course and right. another like guitar course that I was a student for, but I was way, I should not have been at that beginner guitar class course. And I just took it as like an easy A. So just throughout my like business school career, I just took the marketing classes and, you know, the organizational behavior classes because accounting and finance, I was, I was okay with it, but I didn't like it. And uh, so that's what really pulled me through through university Mm. those uh, elective classes that made it worth it for me it's funny you say that too because these days sometimes my parents will ask me questions about like mortgage rates or bonds or something and I went to business school and I couldn't really like coherently answer that (laughs) like I got I got I did well on the test but like after memorizing in a short term I just completely forgot a lot of it um, yeah. but I do, I do agree that like, there was so much other stuff that really helped get through it. And, uh, I feel like so much of what I learned in those years, those formative years, uh, was just more, I guess, general, like not necessarily like what I learned in a book, but that whole, uh, I don't know, your, your life it's very co- Yes. <laughs> and like, like the coming of age and like, yeah. I definitely, I changed so much so often through those years and, uh, the electives really helped. I'm glad you brought that up. Cause I kind of, I completely forgot that, uh, I definitely also had some electives at, um, so the, <clears throat> Just to explain for our lovely viewers, the uh, we were at a business program, but then it was attached to like a general university. And so for some of our non-business courses, we could take them at the university. And I remember one of the classes I liked was uh, I took one course in natural history. And one of my assignments was to like basically document trees. And I was like, this is... Oh. I was also in a very like earthy and extra earthy <laughs> vibe in, in yeah. that particular year as well. Um, I remember That's taking awesome. beginner guitar as well. Did you have a uh, Roger Scanura? I did. Yeah, he's we're a cool still guy. friends on Facebook. I'll I haven't Me talked too. to him in ten years, but I'll <laughs> <Me> see <neither>. <laughs> him. <laughs> he actually. So this is actually his guitar. I had a really no. bad guitar. Yeah, I didn't have a good quality guitar, and we switched, and he. Gave me, uh, like, one of a kind made in Spain wow. guitar. I should really call him up. <laughs> She's a be like, beaut. We should, yeah. we'll, we'll take a clip of this podcast and send it to him. Hey, Roger, yeah. hope you're well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Um, so I'd love to know then, so, okay, so you got through business school, you made it, you rocked, you did, you did a lot of great things too. I remember you were in a bunch of, like, associations and that kind of thing, and, uh, just to distract what? myself from like awful classes, really. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I just wasn't. I didn't like the. I don't. I don't. I don't know. I just didn't love the business. Co- I mean, I hope nobody looks up our background because <laughs> I'm, talking, <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking some smack about our. I mean, it was a good <laughs> program. We just didn't feel. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people kind of feel that way about university. Where <clears throat> yeah. I yeah, was the yeah. president of the marketing association. Heck yeah. I'm sure I mean, that looked like, great on your resume, you know? Exactly. That's really also why I did it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, to be honest, for, for me too, by the end of it, it was very much just like, I don't even know what I'm what I want to do with this. It's more just like I need to get the piece of paper of the diploma and then and then get and then go. So 
Yeah. Um, what uh, What made you decide to, I guess there's kind of a two-step here, but um, you went to law school in LA and what made you decide to go to law school and, and move to LA? Uh, so after graduating business school, I mean, with the courses in the track that I selected, which was like marketing, I didn't see myself uh, doing that as a career. And again, I loved music and I loved being entertained. And at the time, <laughs> I was watching this silly little show called Entourage. And I was like, man, Sweet. LA looks cool. <laughs> so, and then I did some more research and I figured out that a lot of agents, managers even, and obviously lawyers, they're all, they've all gone to law school. They're all certified, like barred lawyers, not certified, barred lawyers. And um, I figured that if I became a lawyer, even if I wasn't going to be a lawyer, I would have the tools and the knowledge to be in the entertainment industry mm. in a way that would command uh, authority and attention. And I would just mm. like know exactly what's going on in the, in the industry. So it was more... I was just kind of interested in the actual industry itself. And I mean, first generation immigrant, uh, every immigrant family has, you know, struggles and uh, whether that's like cultural or financial. And what was most important to me was to make sure I could financially stand on my two feet at the end of the day. And I mean, I heard through the grapevine that, you know, lawyers make a lot of money. And I was like, right. <laughs> this seems like a good idea. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, I'm still in law school debt, uh, so we'll, we'll get there. <laughs> but, but I mean, at the end of the day, I can stand on my two feet and, uh, you know, make myself uh, live. I don't even know yes. where I was going with yeah, that. Man, so, survive, yeah. <laughs> survive. I mean, survival. Uh, yeah, survival is important. So, yeah, I mean, that's why. And I went into law school being like, I'm going to be a lawyer for the artists. Yeah. Okay. But then, uh, <laughs> so, I mean, so I've been in L.A. for almost 10 years now, which is wild to me. Right. And the more I came into, you know, social circles and met a lot of people, the people who live in L.A. are, you know, Half of them are extremely talented, worthy of representation, of advocating for, and they're great people. But then there's, like, the other half that want to be, like, influencers that are not necessarily... Mm, not I don't want to say talented, but I don't I don't particularly enjoy what they're doing. Okay. So, and I noticed that in a lot of the social circles and... I just can't imagine represent those people. And when you're a lawyer for um, artists, you're and whether that's uh, on your own practice or if you're working for a law firm, I mean, at the end of the day, you have to secure the bag and represent them. So I didn't necessarily want to be in a spot where I wasn't passionate about the people that I was representing. And mm -hmm. the thing that I like about the media company that I work for is that we service both type of talent so yeah. some people i'm like oh god like what are we doing for this person that is just pretty that's their talent they're just pretty mm. <laughs> which is i mean great for them good for them true but then and sometimes requires great talent because i still have a very hard time exercising <laughs> frequently so power Same. to you <laughs> <laughs> but then there's like the other half that we serve is that, you know, they're actually very t talented and um, good actors, good musicians, etc. So I uh, like the company that I work for and the position that we're at right now. It's kind of cool, too, because by nature of like the media company and the, the other kinds of things that you mentioned that the company does, it sounds like you're kind of meshing both your business and legal background. Yeah, which definitely. Cool. I mean, so I'm not the one that's like watching videos or listening to uh youtube yeah, podcasters etc but uh it does come through my desk as far as the deal terms and i have the 
authority to negotiate the business deal terms. I'm not just like reading the fine print of like reps and warranties, indemnities, like governing law. Like I'm actually going into like, okay, we're paying you this. You're exclusive. This means you can't, you know, put your podcast on this other platform. And uh, so there's a lot of business decision making that goes on. And a lot of companies actually, uh, the lawyer's titles will be business and legal affairs. Interesting. So that's that's my title also. And uh, it is a combination of both and more heavy on the legal side, but you definitely work with the business counterparts in order to figure out a solution. So it's it's pretty creative in that way. Wow. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> no, seriously, so. I'm so I'm so proud of you. That's uh you've Thanks. accomplished so much in in that amount of time. And um I guess I'm curious if you have any like advice or watch outs for, you know, content creators, influencers, podcasters, YouTubers, anything they should do or not do. <laughs> Yeah, um, I think the main thing that I would, the the number one thing is to really establish your brand before you put it out there. I mean, even mm. you, you know, you recently changed your artist name. And once yeah. you do that, um, do some research as far as with a lawyer to see if anyone has like trademarked your artist name uh, or if it's being used in any other ways. And after you do that, let's say if you have any logos or anything, make sure you copyright those. If you can, register with the copyright office. You don't have to, but it's helpful if you're going to, if people are stealing your stuff and you want to assert your rights. Um, right. And also, if there's any money out of your pocket uh, going towards your art, 100% set up some sort of like a business entity because you could expense that for tax purposes. So those are the things that I would 100% uh, advise someone to do if they're really serious about going into the industry and just generally learn the terms of art. Like what does exclusivity mean? What is work for hire? What does it mean when someone like owns your stuff or what can you use, not use of other people's stuff and um, just so that you're aware of what's going on. And, uh, and, it, and the last thing really would be to, if you're signing anything, if you don't even have like a lawyer or agent or anything, just like read it over. And if you have any questions about it, ask the person who sent it to you, what does this mean? Because mm-hmm. I mean, hopefully they'll be transparent and tell you what this is about. So those are the main things that I would advise, advise. That is <laughs> Honestly, that's that's really good advice, and I, I really appreciate you sharing that. I don't really do any of those things, um, <laughs> but I can I can say that I I was really grateful to you, especially last year when um, I had sort of a similar situation where after you know I've been writing uh, vocals for drum and bass tracks for almost ten years, and and f- for the most part, I'm also signing contracts with record labels, and you know for the first five six years of that, I just kind of signed it because I don't really know what this says. Um, You know, I looked at to see like what would the royalty be and that was kind of it. Uh, Mm -hmm. And if they spelled my name correctly. Um, And then after many years of that, I remember I approached you last year and saying like, hey, I've been signing all these contracts for all this time. I feel like it's probably time for me to learn a little bit more about what I'm signing. And you'd recommended that excellent book to me. Um, the, the music business one, I think Larry Passman or something like that. Yeah. Highly recommend. I have to, I have to still, there's still a lot that I get kind of confused by, especially with like publishing royalties versus like recording royalties. Hey, me royalties. too. I'm not oh a music gosh. lawyer and I'll totally admit that. So I have to refer back to that book all the time. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, it's, um, I don't think people or artists in general should be afraid to hire lawyers, agents, managers, because, I mean, there's this whole stigma that they can be expensive, but there's Mm -hmm. a lot of them that are willing to help out, you know, starting artists. And there's a lot of nonprofit organizations that would be more than happy to, you know, look at your one page contract because it doesn't, you know, take that much time. And 
By the way, everything I say here is my personal opinion. This is not nice. legal advice. <laughs> <laughs> just, just putting that out there. It does not represent uh, the point of views of the company that I work for. <laughs> so just going to put that little asterisk over there. <laughs> yes, excellent. <laughs> should have yes, started yes. with that. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know. I should have. <laughs> my bad. My bad. Here my we bad. Are. <laughs> yes. No, That's seriously, this, this podcast was just an excuse for me to ask you for legal advice. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can do that with that. No. Well, but here um, we are. <laughs> that's that's cool to know. There's some nonprofits as well. I didn't uh, I didn't know that because because you're right. Like I think a lot of it is just I'm not bringing in really almost any money. So you know I don't I don't have the I guess it, it, you know the expense budget to to cover something like that. But I also know that there are so many resources online and. Um, you can really teach a lot to yourself and there's people out there that are willing to help. I think you're absolutely right about the stigma. I think aside from it being expensive, I feel like there's also stigma of like anytime you work with a manager, they're out to get you or they like take too much or like you shouldn't have representation and that sort of thing. And maybe that's, that's the case while you're starting up. But if you're, I guess, serious about things and things are evolving, then there does come a time. Uh, I am going to look more deeply into, uh, you talked about like trademarking and, and copyrights and that sort of thing. I don't really, haven't really thought too much about that. So, And I'm a California lawyer, so this might be totally different in Canada also. Fair. So this is what I know from my practice here. Again, this is not legal advice. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but... Um, but you did, um, I mean, hit up a good point as far as, um, you know, you're not making any money, but your mics, your, you know, software licenses, those are all expenses that you can mm. write off in California. So yeah. I don't know exactly how it works in Canada, uh, but I mean, it would definitely be worth looking into. For sure. It's, uh, it's another kind of point of confusion that I've had because... Right now, the way I do it is because I'm still, I'm not really making anything almost. It's, uh, I consider it like self-employment kind of thing. So I don't have a business entity, but when it comes to tax time, you know, I'll, I'll kind of calculate it at that point. But then it's also like, well, when is it time to register a business? And I also help out with a, an electronic music label here in Toronto called Deviant Audio. And it's like, well, do we, when do we register that as a business and like that whole thing. So I, th I will take that offline, um, <laughs> but <laughs> this yeah. has been super, super helpful so far. Um, yeah. You mentioned California. I have to ask, this is really silly. Um, yeah. Celebrity sightings. Do you see celebrities oh, all the time? <laughs> I've had quite a few fun ones. Um, so the best, well, this is not a sighting. Well, the best sighting that it was coincidental that happened what was his name? I wrote it down. Hold on. Um, his name is RJ Mitt from Breaking Bad. Oh, the uh, so sun. The, the sun. sun. Yes. The sun. Cool. At a car wash. I was like, wait. Is at that a car a wash? At a car wash. Just like nice. at a car wash. He was getting his car wash. And so was I. And I was like, hello. Whoa. <laughs> He's like, it's like, do you want a photo? I'm like, yes. <laughs> True, because do you, yeah. they must be so used to it, but then also you want to play it cool, so <laughs> yeah. how do you? <laughs> I mean, I, I, I'm, I have no shame. I don't play cool. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, and then like another, and other ones have been like kind of intentional. So I had a friend who worked in radio and then she was like, oh, Eve is going to come to the studio. I was like, Eve, like the <laughs> yes. rest? She's like, yeah, like, and if you want to come, like, you can, you can come. I was like, oh my God, okay. <laughs> so I like watched Eve get interviewed for like a radio show and Whoa. after, and she was doing like the sound for it and she, we all like met her and I have a photo of her. I'm still very proud of it. Uh, <laughs> so that was great. And wow. another cool thing was, um, <laughs> Jeez, yeah, no, man. that was wild. And the best thing, the best thing that I've done, quote unquote, is I was a student member uh, for the Grammys. Like they have, you can pay and become a Grammys member, but like as a student, okay. it's a less bright, like nominal fee. And okay. you go to these like workshops and 
It's actually pretty cool. Um, they do a lot of local events where they teach uh, artists on, you know, the business. So, but what they, the coolest thing that they do is um, they have people come out as seat fillers for the actual Grammys award show. Oh my gosh. So a lot of the times, like during the show, the, the crowd has to look full but during the commercials, like, these celebrities go and, like, mingle at the bar okay. and come back, like, as they please. So when the camera pans, it can't be an empty seat. So they have seat fillers. And they do this. They give these tickets out, free tickets to the students to be seat fillers next to celebrities. So at that, I was like, so I went to the Grammys once is the story. And I was like, oh, my God, I don't even everyone's a celebrity here. <laughs> so I was at I was seated uh, at a corridor. And as I walked in, Drake was late. <laughs> so <Okay>. then <laughs> as they made us wait for like one of the presentations to end for it to go to commercial, I waited in line to get into like the auditorium with Drake and a security guard. And I was like, I'm from Toronto, too. <laughs> can you, you, I guess, can you talk to them or you can't? No, you're not it's supposed like a, to. You're not supposed to. I said to. it in my mind. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you sent the Toronto vibes. <laughs> yeah. And then, I always thought that was a, I guess funny. not a myth, but I don't know. Was that like a Seinfeld episode or something where, yeah, there's like a seat filler thing. And I, I guess I didn't know that that was real. And, uh. <laughs> Yeah. No, it Dude, is. What a hub of uh yeah, you basically get all your celebrity sightings in one and you can't talk yeah. to them. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just I mean, in LA, like people live here, people like go on about their day here. So I mean there's more that I've that I've I've had encounters, but those like were the coolest ones, I think, in my opinion. And just being in L.A., there's just so many opportunities. Like, for example, the Grammy. It's called Grammy. It was called Grammy U or Grammy Academy Student Membership or something. And they just put on these events in L.A. for musicians who are in school or business students even who are in school who want to go into music business. So wow. there's because it's just so entertainment focused, this entire city. There's just a lot of opportunities to uh, network and to go to events that just pop up out of nowhere. That's amazing. I'm so glad it's been yeah. working out for you. Yeah. I'm um, sorry if you... my dog is barking. Oh, no, I could Is he going to continue? Can we get, like, a celebrity <laughs> sighting of your dog on camera? He's he's laying down, and I feel like <laughs> if I move my whole setup, it's going to be... It's gonna no be worries, thing. no worries. Are you kind of <gasps> decent? Oh, there he goes. <laughs> Sorry, you might need to cut this out. <laughs> no, no worries at all. Um, dogs are amazing. I uh, I don't have my own dog, but uh, we have our family dog, Tyson, as you know. And he has been such a source of uh, warmth and comfort and companionship over the years. I always... Uh, I'm always happier whenever I have to, like, take him, you know, for a couple days or that kind of thing. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. How have you been, um, I don't want to get too like pandemic focused, but, uh, I will ask you, Panorama. uh, yeah, <laughs> one question. <laughs> um, what's been sort of, what's been helping you get through the last year and have you learned anything about yourself at all? Should I, I'm going to tell him to not do that first. Sure. Is that okay? Yeah, no worries. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> In the meantime, you're watching and listening to Flow with the Show. Flow with the Show. Hope you're doing all right. I'm doing okay. This is the third episode. I'm very grateful to have Jansu here. Oh, were you listening to that? Nice. <laughs> no worries. No worries. Um, Riley so, is great. <laughs> I don't know if he's going to continue. I tried to make him stop. We'll see. That's okay. I'm so sorry. No, uh, no but all. Yeah. Uh, the question was, the, the call was, how did I get through the pandemic? What helped me and what I learned yeah. about myself? I, what, what I learned hmm. during the pandemic is that mental health is key. And, uh, I mean, I don't talk about this often, even, like, with my friends, but I... 
have been going on and off to therapy because, you know, uh, nice. it's, I think is super helpful for anyone and everyone. Just Agreed. even to process everything that's going on. And uh, it has helped a lot. And in addition to that, Riley, my dog, has been awesome. I mean, just the fact that I have to go outside twice a day for a right. nice long walk has been life-changing ever since I got him. Because, I mean, otherwise, I was just sitting on the couch. Because why would I go for a walk? <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's been super helpful. Um, and, I mean, as I age, I also have, like, bad knees and bad ankles. So... <laughs> Oh, as you age, bro, we got yeah. so many years ahead of us. <laughs> I know, you're right, you're right. But as uh, I've been going to physical therapy, and in, like, I don't know how it is. It's different at different places, but what they do is they, like, work on you for half an hour, and you work out for, like, 30 to 45 minutes. So throughout okay. the pandemic, I've just been doing that, um, and it's just made me stronger uh, and it's been super helpful not only for my physical health but my mental health so yeah and just patience a lot of patience hmm. is what I learned because I am not a patient person I have to be on the go mm. all the time and during the pandemic it just gave me an opportunity and I think everyone an opportunity to just kind of pause reevaluate and uh, listen to our bodies, our minds, or and everything that's going on around us. And uh, you know, if we're very fortunate, very, very uh, uh, full of glad gratitude that uh, everything has been all right this year, and hope it continues that way. So we'll yes. see. Oh my gosh, you're doing a. Uh sounds like you're doing all the right things. I'm so proud and inspired of you. Wow. <laughs> Seriously. Thanks. I mean, yeah, when I talk about it, 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 it feels like it's uh, all the right things. But during, like, when I'm talking to, in therapy and I'm like, I'm so anxious. It doesn't mm. feel that way. <laughs> but, I mean, I think it's just very important to, even if you don't want to do something, just knowing when you're feeling good like when you're at a high that okay if I do x it will make me feel good and therefore I will go on that long walk rather than the short walk even if I don't want to mm -hmm. it's to constantly remind myself of the end result like let's say there's a I have therapy like every other week and I'm like well what am I gonna talk about I don't want to talk about right. anything but when you turn it on and you do talk about some stuff and you process and it's helpful it's just important to remember that end result and the way that you feel after you achieve something because I can procrastinate and the reason why I go to physical therapy is that because I don't work out well on my own either right, yeah. so it's really hard <laughs> to get yeah. motivated to do that I can relate <laughs> yeah <laughs> I'm glad you bring up therapy because it's uh yeah it's something that I haven't talk too much about I'd only ever been to uh, a few sessions over the years um and I remember in my very very first one I had just and I wasn't even really that like upset at the time but as soon as the session started I just immediately started crying and I and she's like why are you crying and uh well not, not in that tone but <laughs> um <laughs> I was like, <laughs> you know, I, yeah, why are you crying? Um, I was like, I feel, I guess, bad that I'm even here because I have so many great things in my life and I shouldn't be upset and I shouldn't, you know, have problems. And so many people, uh, have far worse problems than I. So like, you know, why would I even like feel that I need to go to therapy and that sort of thing. And so we unpacked that for, for a while. Um, but I am, I am really glad that you bring it up because I, I do feel like it's one of those things that also has a stigma and I know stigma is a common word these days, but I feel like as much as everyone's kind of talking about mental health, um, when you talk to some people about the concept of going to therapy, often the feedback is like, well, you know, either that you, it wouldn't really help you or that this person 
wouldn't really understand or just that yeah like they just they don't need it and I remember I feel like I probably had some of that feedback when I was considering uh therapy back in the day and um one of my friends had let me know that it is really about uh sometimes it is about like finding the right therapist and the right person and that not every therapist you're gonna like feel that you can mesh with or or learn from and so it is a matter of you know if, if this particular therapist that you've seen the very first one is like no this is the wrong choice then try somebody else it's it might be you know the fit with the particular person so um thanks for sharing that it sounds like you're doing you gotta shop around I mean, mm, ah. like, I, <laughs> <that's, Shopper. laughs> it's, yeah, and it, that applies to everything, you know? It applies to the therapist, it applies to your manager, it applies to an agent, it applies to your lawyer, whoever is giving you services, you got to shop around. I mean, I've gone through, yeah, I, I went through a couple of therapists before. Okay. I found my my boo peter nice he's great peter. <laughs> so, <Shout Peter>. peter. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i mean it's and even if it's just i mean they're trained professionals uh that are licensed to help you process right so i could go to a friend and you know they could give me as much empathy as they can but it just takes a different person to kind of walk you through what you're going through because they just like, you know, we went to business school, law school, and just like we studied things, so did they. <laughs> so it's, um, I think it's super beneficial for everyone. I'm a huge advocate for therapy. I talk about it to my parents and, you know, it's still tough, uh, to let them accept that, you know, mm-hmm. that I'm even going to therapy because there is 100% a stigma, but I think it's just beneficial for everyone. Because we're humans, we need help. No one's here on their own. <laughs> and uh, I think it's best for for good mental health. Yes. I mean, the, the parental thing is definitely um, a big piece of it, for sure. I, uh, I'm glad you brought up earlier as well that it's, it kind of shaped a lot of the pressure that you felt to go to business school in the first place and, and law school in the first place. And uh I definitely, as, as you know, I, I can relate a lot with, you know, my, my folks also being from Eastern Europe and, you know, me and my sister are the first ones to, to grow up in, in North America. And so I feel like, yeah, a lot of the reason that I am the way I am is because of that kind of pressure to succeed and get stable jobs and be super smart and, uh, you know, that whole thing of like, you get 95% on a test, but that's still not good enough because Why you could have gotten a hundred. What happened to the other five? <laughs> what happened to the other five? Uh. I mean, I feel like I'm still working through a lot of that. Um, I know that like, I've done so many things in my life for the validation of my parents and especially like just wanting to be an artist is something that I've been fighting I guess fighting through, I feel like my whole life, I feel like, you know, it took me all these years to get to a point where now I'm like, well, no, you know what? I still want to be an artist and I did all the right things that I was supposed to do. I got good grades. I went to university. I spent 10 years in, you know, good corporate jobs and I'm still not, I feel like I'm not doing like, I'm not being true to myself. I'm not like being completely who I am. And, uh, at this point, and it took, you know, 31 years, but at this point, it's like, if I don't do the things that I really want, really want to do for myself and not for my parents, then I'm going to regret it. And even if I do all the things that they want me to do, you know, 20 years from now, I'm going to be unhappy. They're going to be unhappy because I'm unhappy. So it was a kind of a lose, lose situation. And I had to put the stake in the ground, I guess, and, and say, okay, no, for the first time I'm going to do things for me. And it is, I, I still have, I guess, difficulty with it now because I do want them to be proud of me. <laughs> and so I have and I'm to sure accept. They are. I'm sure they, I mean, at the end of the day, like we, I, I'll, I can, uh, cause our parents did a great job on us. I think we're both like pretty well-rounded individuals who have a drive and, you know, nobody's perfect. And at the end of the day, whether it's business school, whether it's law school, whether it's being a lawyer or a musician, I think they want us to be happy. And at the end of the day, 
they have an idea of what makes them happy and it's totally mm. normal for them to project onto us you know what right. they think happiness is and that could be a stable job you right. know recurring income and and I I I mean I wanted to be a musician for a while I thought I did but at the end of the day what I found that drove me and my life was more about being financially stable too and kind of experiencing as much as I want and experiencing things like I've done everything from like windsurfing to nice. <laughs> like no rappelling down waterfalls. I'm learning how to scuba dive starting next nice. week. Nice. Yeah. So, I mean, and all those things cost money, you know, because yes. so <laughs> capitalism rules the world. And um, so I think there's something inside of us that drives us that we can't live without it. Mm. And for you, I knew from the start of when I met you that was 100% music. And I'm so really? happy that, yeah, for sure. You were so like, I, you were the happiest when you were, when we were improvising in our formative years of <laughs> finding those, you know, F slash D chords. And yeah. like, <laughs> 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 so it's, uh, it's, uh, I think. I mean, for me, I, it makes me happy, but not to the point of I can't live without this. And that's mm. why I'm content with my life of, you know, being a lawyer to earn money to experience things because that's yeah. what drives me. And uh, so everyone, I think that's the that's the secret to life to see what, you know, makes you truly happy and to follow it. Wow. <laughs> well, I think that's a great that's a, that's a great place to. To wrap up here, geez, we're blowing, blowing minds here. Um, <laughs> geez. Um, I guess I'll, oh I'll ask you, I'll ask you one last question, and, and maybe it's a little bit of, I guess, leading into that, um, what you just said. Um, if you had to give yourself a piece of advice as a kid, what do you wish? What what advice do you wish you got as a kid? I think the biggest advice. I wish I got as a kid was to just kind of like go for it and make mistakes. Um, I was just so consumed at points of my, at different points of my life to be just like perfect. And, and, and to be frank with you, that's the reason why I kind of shifted away from playing music because I was mm -hmm. not perfect. I was not the best guitar player. I wanted to be the best at everything that I did. And like I was and anything that I couldn't, then I just kind of was like, man, like I'm not going to do it. So it's just kind of like go for it. Don't give yourself a hard time. And, um, you know, if you fail, you have the rest of your life to find something better that makes you happy mm -hmm. or to make up for the mistakes that you have made. So, yeah, just, like, go for it. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Yeah. Go for yeah. it. You heard it here first. <laughs> go for it. <laughs> well, thank you again so much for joining me. I'm so glad we had yeah. a chance to catch up. I'd love to have you on again one day in the future. Of course. It's so fun to talk to you. To and, not get uh, legal advice. <laughs> and we're not giving legal advice, disclaimer. <laughs> Um, yeah. I will put a bunch of, uh, social media links and stuff in the description and, uh, thanks again. Thanks again for joining me. I hope you and your family take care. You and, too. Uh, thanks. You know, I miss your mom. She was so nice. Is this oh, a reasonable thing to say? <laughs> that is very nice. She may, she might watch this. She was very excited that I was going to have you on the podcast. So hi mama. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I remember you very well. <laughs> she remembers you. That's awesome. Well, thanks everyone for tuning in. This is Flo at the show. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Um, I've also got some merch on my website, flowanastasia.com. Some cool t-shirts and some mugs. Got some... Ah, yes! Jansu, thank you! <laughs> Jansu modeling the uh, the black Flo Anastasia t-shirt. Thank you. Excellent! <laughs> and uh, sending you all lots of love. Thanks again for tuning in. See you. <laughs>